Parashlach, Dabar Malchus, Dvar Malchut, I'm sorry, the word, royal words. Okay, again, we're going to talk about here about the, the spies, this, the scouts that Moses sent into the land of Israel and the terrible tragedy that happened because of that and how it was a good thing. What good we can learn from it. Now, this is a general message of the Torah. General message of the Torah. Everything that God creates, he creates for a purpose. And it's always a good purpose. Sometimes the purpose is, is to avoid the thing. Push it away. Sometimes. But sometimes the purpose is, is to search for what is the good and bring out the good. To know how to discern between them is what the Torah is here for, and that's what life is for, right? That's what experience is for, and what you have teachers for, excuse me. And so the Torah comes to teach us what is good and how to bring out the good. So here we have a terrible story in the Torah. It talks about, apparently, a, a very bad thing, that the Jews refused to go into the land of Israel after all God did for them, and after all the pleadings and the beseechings of Moses, they refused to go, and they were just taken out of Israel, out of Egypt and given the Torah in order to go to the land of Israel and make it a holy place, and they refused. So that's a pretty bad story. There's what's called the half Torah. After we finish reading the Torah portion, so there's a portion that we read from, usually it's from the prophets, but once in a while it's not here. That It's written, this is from the book of, uh, of uh, Joshua, Joshua. And it talks about the same thing that Joshua also sent in spies. He sent in spies. There were certain differences between them. Moses sent in 12 spies. Joshua sent in two spies. Moses sent in spies. And they, they were in a revealed way. What They didn't take any pains to hide themselves. And Joshua sent that They were concealed. They were hidden. And of course, Moses' uh, spies, uh, they spied out the whole land of Israel. And Joshua, they just went into the city of Jericho, Yericho. And of course, the big one was the Moses' spies didn't succeed. They came back and told the people not to go into the land of Israel. And Joshua's spies did succeed, right? They facilitated the, the, the victory of the Jewish people in conquering the land of Israel. Okay, so here we go. That's what this is going to talk about. <clears throat> Dover come upon me. We've spoken many times. We have spoken many times <clears throat> about Hachaluka, the Kriya Satora, and how the Torah is divided up. Now, I know that you people outside of Israel are <clears throat> in Balotcha. You're learning, you're reading this week what we read last week. But eventually you'll get up to this. And in any case, even if we were talking about you know, any part of the Torah, it's interesting. So here you got an interesting <clears throat> topic, the spies. And also, you do read this. The people outside of Israel, they do read this, but they read it on Mincha of Shabbat, the end. Okay. Though we've spoken many times, Orot HaChaluka, <clears throat> regarding the, the division of re in reading the Torah in the Parshas of the week. Sha'av Shabbat calls Shabbat, even though that every single Shabbat, we read another Torah portion in the Torah that's relevant, especially to this time. The Chol Yom, and every day of the week, we learn one portion of that of Torah, right? The, the Torah reading is divided up into seven portions, because they call up seven people and in Shabbat. They call people up to the, to the Torah reading. Seven people, and each one is read in another portion, another part of that week's Torah section, right? So ne is, nevertheless, the whole entire Torah portion and every detail which is in it, this is relevant to every, to the whole entire Torah. From Bereshit, from the beginning of the Torah, to the Enei so the last words of the Torah. So the whole Torah is really one unit. It's like taking, you know, a, a person and pulling him by his finger. So his whole body comes with it. So it doesn't make any difference which part of the Torah you're learning. It's, it's relevant to the whole Torah. But the Torah is... Like the language of the is written as a Torah achat. It's one Torah. Kamo, just like a parsha achat, just like in one section of the Torah. Shakol chelik shabo, just like in every single Torah portion. 
that every portion in a kashur is attached, is connected to the whole entire Torah portion. So in other words, every word in the Torah pulls the whole entire Torah, and how much more so a small portion of the Torah. For instance, that portion of the Torah that we're reading this week, Shalach. So every word and every idea is connected to the whole entire Torah portion. Like this is stressed that what we read on Shabbat, according that we read the whole entire Torah portion from the beginning to the end. Okay. Indians there, this whole idea, especially in this week's Torah portion, Parsha Shlach. Here we can really see the unity of this Torah portion. Parsha Shlach, this Torah portion this week, it deals mainly with one topic the spies. There's other things also that are mentioned over here, but generally speaking, from the beginning to the end, it's just talking about what happened with the spies and how the spies came back and how the spies says you can't, shouldn't go in, etc. Echel, it begins with the sending of the spies. That's the beginning. And then that's the first reading. Then it talks about how the spies went into the land of Israel and how they wandered around. They went from the north to the south, where they, the whole place the land of Israel, and then how they returned. And then they gave the report to our own Moshe and our own, Vakal Adas of Israel, and all the Jews were gathered together. Vakal Ishtaushlus, and then all of the occurrences, the whole chain of events from Meshech Lezad that, that resulted from this, until finally everybody, Moses got really angry at them, and God got angry, even more angry, and he punished them. That's from the second reading, second uh, uh, division of this, until the fifth, <clears throat> right, till the fifth. And then, so if so, the first, the seventh, the, the Torah portion, this week's Torah portion is divided into seven. The first of the seven is sending the spies and them coming back. The second, third, and fourth talks about how they reported and what the people said, and how God got angry at them, etc. And it continues, then after that, it talks about, in, the, in this week's Torah, the fifth and the sixth and the seventh, talk about the libations. Libations, there was a commandment to bring, anytime you brought a sacrifice, they would bring wine offerings. It would pour it on the special funnel that was on the altar. Okay, it says, Ki tavo is when you come to the land of Israel, and you do the commandments, and you offer up, you have to, we have the yain and the nesach, you have to have wine offering on the altar. Sha'av shechato, that even though the <clears throat> Jewish people sinned the nigzo and there was put this terrible decree on the Jews that they were going to wander in the desert for 40 years, nevertheless bisar le'em, God gave them good news that they were, they were going to come into the land of Israel. At the end of, and that's mentioned at the end of the fourth until the sixth reading of the Torah. This is one long story that caused it's almost the whole entire portion. In other words, this whole entire Torah reading, Shalach, it goes from the first reading until the end of the sixth reading, talking about how the spies came back and said, let's not go into the land of Israel. The, the, the Jewish people said, we're not going. God punished them. And then God said, but don't worry about it. After you finish wandering in the desert, you're going to go. Your next generation will go into the land of Israel. But it's all talking about the same, <clears throat> same event about the, these scouts being sent and coming back and the result of that. I share that today in order to understand what is going on in this whole Torah portion. It's not enough just to learn one part. You have to read the whole entire thing. Like a movie, right? You see one little five minutes of the movie. It would be very interesting, but you, it has to be in proper context. You don't know who the good guys are or who the bad guys are. Until the end, Shabazad, that in this, we can see all the Torah portions, how it all fits in together. Right? You have to read the whole thing. And even more, Shasim, at the end of this week's Torah portion, namely, because everything goes after the end, <clears throat> is talking about what? Right in the end, is stuck one paragraph about tzitzis. Right after this whole story about the spies and the Jewish people and they're getting punished and God promises them, don't worry, you're going to go in the land of Israel. At the very, very end, is stuck one paragraph about the commandment of tzitzit. 
What are tzitzit? Tzitzit are the strands that you put on the corners of the garment. Men. It's a commandment for men because it's only in the daytime. The commandments that are time oriented are only, women are exempt from. So the men put strings, certain, it's a certain way to do it, but strings on the corner of your garments, right? It's four strings that double over, doubled over to eight strings on the four corners of the garments. That's called tzitzit. The garment is called a talit, and the, the strings are called tzitzit. It says you should look at them and you remember all the commandments of God. Shemin and gamacha tzitzit, the numerical value of tzitzit is 600. Tzitzit is 600. Tzadik is 90. Yud is 100. So you have one time 100, one another time 100, and top is four. It's 400. And the eight strings and the five knots that you make on the strings, right? K N O T S, knots you make on the strings. This comes out to 13,613. That's like the Torah. The Torah is that every section of the Torah is tied to everything else in the Torah. You look at the tzitzit, you remember and reminded about the whole entire Torah, the 613 commandments. Okay. Says the Rebbe, that's this week's Torah portion in a nutshell. The first seven Torah por seven uh, sections are talking about the result of the spies going into Israel. And the, right at the end is stuck this thing about the tzitzit. Circle up, we have to understand. Since the whole in, everything that is in the Torah is very, very exact, so Mustafa Loma, it's logical to say that if everything is exact, so therefore the idea of the unity of the Torah and the Parsha Shlach, because the whole entire Torah portion is this Parsha Shlach is only talking about one topic. So it must be that somehow or other this idea of unity of the Torah is somehow or other expressed with this terrible story of the spies, of the scouts. And number one, number two, because everything is connected to everything else. So what is the connection to the time when this is being read? Shalach, which this is the end of the month of Sivan. The end of the month of Sivan. Now, I think by us, this is not the end of the month of Sivan. Where is it? Just one second. I had a, here it is, here it is. One second. No, it's not. Ne by us, uh, by, listen, by you in America, it will be outside of Israel. You're reading Shalach at the last Shabbat of the month of Sivan. Last Shabbat of the month of Sivan. And we over here are reading it. <clears throat> Not on the last month. By us, the last month is next week. Parshat Korach. Okay, so this is, you, you people, that's your consolation prize over there that we're, we're reading Shalach over here, but by you, it's relevant what the Rebbe said, that it's the last week of the month. Okay, so the last month of the month, let's talk about this. Yesh Ba'er. we have to explain, first of all, what is this thing that Moses sent these scouts, these spies, whether in this week's Torah portion or also the Haftorah that I told you about, that this is also, <clears throat> the, this, this is the completion, this is like the seal, which is put on this, this, this week's Torah reading. The, the, the spies that Joshua sent. Even though that this is talking about the same topic, but it's talking about how spies, Scouts were sent by means of Joshua, Yehoshua. And there are many, many differences between what Moses did and what Joshua did. Like I talked, told you about in the, in the uh, introduction. Let's read there. there. Here we have, the Rebbe brings down six differences. One difference is <clears throat> the spies that Moses sent out the spies that Moses sent out, Shlach Lacha, Rashi says, Ladatcha. Rashi says that the spies that Moses sent out, that was his own <clears throat> decision. God said, I need any I'm not, I'm not commanding you. So if you want to, you can send. <clears throat> so the spies that Moses sent, 
those were Moses' Moses' decision. God said, I'm not going to tell you not to send them, but I'm not going to tell you to you can you call the shots, Moshe. You decide. Which is not the case. The, the, the spies that Joshua sent, the law said Joshua did not do it on his own. Raksha Hashem, God must have commanded him. Al came therefore come moving like it's explained. Shalachra kill called it after the terrible <clears throat> tragedy that was as a result of the sending of the totes of, of the spies of the Miraglin from Moses without God's commandment, as Joshua certainly would not have sent spies, these scouts, on his own. So we have to say, even though it doesn't say clearly that God told him, but we have to say that God must have commanded him, Joshua, to do it. So Moses sent it and from his own volition, and <clears throat> Joshua sent his spies. He only sent two spies. He sent his spies to spy out the land of Israel <clears throat> from because God commanded him. Number two. And Moshe, it says, Shalach Lacha Anashim. It says, send people. God doesn't say send scouts or spies or surveyors. Beaturu at there, it says, no. And they, they should survey the land of Canaan. It doesn't say the Yachperu, that they should <clears throat> spy out the land of Israel or whatever. <clears throat> In some ways, they're calling Moses' scouts that he sends spies. They weren't spies. They weren't spies. They came just to survey the land of Israel to see. By Joshua, it says Anashim Raglim. By Joshua, it says he sent spies, Lachfor the Orts, that they should, how do you say, um, um, uh, what is it? To reveal the secrets of the land. Lachfor at Kol Eretz Ba'o. It says we came to reveal the secrets of the land of Israel, right? where, where the enemies are, who the enemies are. But Moses not. Moses sent his spies in just to survey the land. Survey. But Moraglin, the Moshe, and the spies, I mean, because God promised them that they're going to go in. God promised there's not going to be any problem. So in the spies that Moses sent, this is Ishechad, Ishechad, Lamate, Avotam, Tishlachu. God, Moses sent 12, each one for each tribe. But by Joshua, Joshua only sent two. Jo Joshua, it says, Yoshua, it says, Vayishlach Yoshua, Shnei We only sent two people. Number four, the fourth difference between the spies of Joshua and of Moses. Bamraglin of Moshe and the spies of Moses, Haim Nasiya Yisrael, they were the heads of the tribes. Kol Nasibahim. They were high chosen people. Roshab and Israel, they were the heads of the Jewish people, they were. And these are their names. That, but Moses sent. But by the spies that Joshua sent in. He just sent two regular people. It doesn't really say exactly who they were. It doesn't say the names. How much more so the Milo Chalem. It doesn't say who the people were that, that Joshua sent in. Uh, interesting. Number five. Moses sent spies was an open person. He sent these, let's stop calling them spies. I guess we have to call them scouts. He sent them the scouts in an advertised way. And whether be regarding the Jewish people, that everyone knew that these spies, that these scouts were being sent out. When they came back, it says, it says that they spoke in front of all the people. Also, also regarding to the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. Shari Maraglim, these scouts didn't made no effort to conceal themselves. <clears throat> so that you know they would hide themselves. People would, might say, you know, who are these strangers wandering around? They made no effort to hide themselves. Not only that, each one, or they could say maybe what he should have done, each one should go alone <clears throat> to his portion of the land. There are 12 tribes, right? So each one would go to his place where his area of the land of Israel was going to be. Why did they all go together? They all went together because all because they weren't afraid of being revealed. The God had to make a big nace that nobody put notice them. This is everywhere they went, all of the inhabitants of the land of Israel, there must have been some sort of a plague there or something. They were burying their dead, so nobody even noticed them. So that they would all be <coughs> occupied. <clears throat> the inhabitants of the, of the Canaanites would be in, 
occupied with their mourning and they wouldn't put no, any notice to these 12 spies walking around in the land of Israel, scouting everything down, writing everything down, which is not the case by Joshua. Joshua says but, but clearly, it says that they were spies, that they went in secretly. <clears throat> they hid themselves from the inhabitants of Canaan, and they also hid themselves from the Jews. That, he, the, that Joshua just sent them because he didn't want anyone to know that they were being sent. No one knew about it. And therefore, when the two spies of Joshua came back, it says, El Yeshua, they just went to Joshua and they told Joshua everything. Not like the spies of Moses that they announced to all the Jewish people. They said to Joshua, the Lord, not to all the Jews. And also regarding to the people of the land, it says, It says, make yourselves, hide yourselves. Right, so that you're, you're <coughs> you won't be revealed. It says, what does it mean? Make yourselves. It says, davar acher, cheres. Make yourselves like pieces of of clay. Hitinu atzmachem kaderos shelo shitatu niru kadei shetiyu nirim kikadarim. You should bring like jars in there so that people will think that maybe you're coming to sell. If they do notice you, you won't be noticed. You'll just be like, you've you got your own business there selling things or buying things, but not that you're spies. In other words, Joshua, the people had to make us, his spies had to make a special effort not to be noticed until finally they had to even hide themselves. They went by Rachav, they hid themselves. Like it says, that they had to be concealed. And she said, hurry, run away from here. Maybe they will, you know, you'll meet up with people, you'll be, you'll be noticed. Okay, so what do we have up there now? Let's say we have five differences. What are the five differences? Number one, Moses sent <clears throat> from his own volition. Joshua's commanded. Number two, Moses sent people just to survey the land. And Joshua sent to spy out. Number three, Moses sent 12. Joshua sent only two. Number four, the spies that Moses, the scouts that Moses sent out were well-known people. They were advertised. Everyone knew where they were. And by Joshua, it doesn't even say who their names were, who they sent. Number five, Moses sent out the spies, and they were all revealed. They didn't try to hide themselves. And Joshua's things was they were definitely concealed. And now the sixth. The spies of Moses, they went, and the whole land of Israel says to the length and to the width, 400 parses on 400 parses they went. 400 miles, I guess, by 400 miles somewhere. But the spies that Joshua sent out, even that they were commanded to see the land of Israel, they didn't see the land of Israel. They didn't, all they went into was just Jericho. They did not to any other places in Israel. And even more, Shafilu at Jericho, even Jericho itself, they didn't really, they didn't really spy out the whole Jericho. Why? Because that night, it says, they came just to the house of this woman called Rachav. And she had to hide them, and then she let them go. She lowered them down from the window. They lived like, right, she lived right out, like on, in the wall, on the boundary of Jericho. So they just got up to the boundary. But Yelchav Yavo Ahara, they ran up to, into the mountains, and they hid there for three years, until the, the people that were pursuing them stopped pursuing them, and then they came to Joshua. So they didn't really even spy out the whole land of Israel. Okay, what's the point over here? And then we'll continue this tomorrow. The main po point is the difference between the spies of Moses that this Torah portion is talking about, and the spies of Joshua that we read in the Haftar is that the, spy, that the scouts of Moses and Yeshua they did different things, but the, the, they joined one to the other in order to take over the land of Israel. 
These were two steps, necessary steps in conquering the land of Israel. The spies that Moses sent in, even though apparently they failed, but they didn't really. They succeeded in the first step that they had to make to conquer the land of Israel. And the spies of Joshua, they succeeded. How this is, we'll find out, God willing, tomorrow. And now let's learn the, the uh, Yom Yom.